Good morning, boxing fans. It's Boxing Wave. I just finished watching a uh, Crawford Gamboa fight for the second time this morning, and um, this is this this is a true classic right here. This is what you call a classic. There's this like fight of the years, and then there's classics like this. This this was a dream match. I I, I did a I did a favorite list earlier this year of fights that I want to see. And the third fight that I picked was Mikey Garcia and Uriokis Gamboa. And I would have never thought that Gamboa and Crawford would, were going to fight, you know. I, and I still want to see the Mikey Garcia-Gamboa fight. Um, but this 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 fight here was special, okay, this on so many levels. I, I swear to you, I swear on everything I love, this was probably the best fight I've seen since the Manny Pacquiao Marquez four fight where Pacquiao got knocked out. Hands down. Forget about all of the fight of the year nominations of this year and the best fights of last year, even the Provoknikov Bradley fight, the Carl Frotch Groves fight, all of those fights. Uh, this was hands down. I think my favorite fight of this this year so far was probably the Cunningham and Mansoor fight. Maybe the Provocateur Algeri fight, the uh, Molina. Those were all great fights, but this fight right here was a is a classic. I have it on DVR. I would never remove this fight from my DVR. Like this is a fight that I wish I could buy and purchase on a uh, DVD. You know, this was a great fight. Um, now let me start off with the fight. You know, I've seen a lot of opinions. I was online tweeting during the fight. Okay. Um, I was actually watching a fight with a group of my family. Uh, you know, all of us was watching a fight last night, and uh, you know, I was turned on times where it was so it got so excited. I was jumping up, running, running around the house. It, it was crazy. Uh, I seen a lot of opinions. You know, I seen a lot of people say that the size advantage was the major, the key factor in the fight. I don't think so. You know, Terence Crawford did come in at one fifty two. Gambo was at 145, you know, but look at the first four or five rounds. It was very competitive, all right? Um, I actually believe that Gambo was winning the fight up until he got dropped in the fifth round. Um, I I thought the first three rounds were Gambo clearly. You know, the first three rounds, it looked like another day at the park with Gambo. You know, I'm watching a fight, and I, I picked... Uh, you see my prediction video, you know, I was, you know, I explained how I felt about the fight leading up to the fight, and I picked Terrence Crawford to win, you know, but when the fight started in the first three rounds, when I'm like, oh my god, this is another Lomachenko-Gary Russell fight here, I mean, Gamboa is totally outclassing this guy, the, the experience, this is, this is the, this is what, this is why I was so unsure of whether I should pick Crawford or not because I, I feel that when Gamboa is serious about fighting, okay, and he's not ambushing and training and fighting like brawling, when he really sits there and, and tries to be a thinker throughout the whole fight, he is one of the best fighters in the sport, hands down. I don't care what no one said. And, and, and you see it clearly in the first three, four rounds. Okay, Gamboa... Even though Terrence Crawford switched up his stance, it was going southpaw in the third round, I still felt Gamboa was winning. I thought the fourth round was a draw because it was a close round. But Gamboa was very, very efficient with that right hand. Terrence Crawford, even after he switched his style up, all the way up into the part when Gamboa got dropped. And the thing about that is the knockdown was legit. Okay, whether he slipped or not, Gambo was hurt by that right hook before he got dropped. That's what hurt him. Okay, and then after he got back up, Crawford was all over him, landing big shots because Gambo was trying to ambush and trade with him and started swinging wild. And that was this is when the size advantage came into play, the power and the side of size advantage. He fell right, as, and I said this in the prediction video. Gamboa is going to try to trade with this guy 
and, and, and Crawford is a bigger, stronger fighter. He's going to counter him. And he's going to knock him out because we see Gamboa get dropped by fighters that's not even that good, okay, for the same reason because Gamboa, he has the heart of a lion and he likes, he can't fight a full technical fight. But you can sit here and argue about fatigue. I think fatigue played a factor after he was hurt and knocked down in that fourth, that fifth round. But because uh, the damage was done, you know, I, I think if he fought a smart technical fight the whole time, I think he might have beat Terrence Crawford. But Gamboa doesn't fight like that, you know. Whenever Terrence Crawford got him with something, a good shot, Gamboa wanted to prove and he wanted to go to war. He hears the crowd reaction. He wants to go to war with this kid. And that's when the size advantage did come into play, okay, because Crawford... You know, you're trading with a guy that hit harder than you, you know, that's really, that could be a guy that could be easily fight at 147, okay? And Gamboa, it wasn't smart for him. Uh, the first three rounds, I gave the Gamboa the fourth. I, I thought it was a draw. The fifth round, obviously, Terrence Crawford. But up until he got knocked down, I thought Gamboa was winning this fight with that right hand. Even when he was... Crawford was doing a lot better offensively when he switched it up southpaw. But Gamboa was so consistent with that right hand. All right. After the fight, after that, Gamboa didn't look the same. Okay. Gamboa wasn't landing that right hand. Okay. He was a lot slower. He looked a lot sloppy in there. And then he was still trying to trade with Crawford. And it was just the wrong, the wrong approach in this fight. Okay. Um, overall, we see the happen. We see what happened in the ninth round. You know, Crawford knocks him out, and um, it was a great fight. You know, this was a dream match. This is what happens. See, this is why, and I blame HBO a lot for this and the commentators because the whole thing with Rigadia and the way they played him, you know, it made it seem like he's a boring fighter, and. This is what happens when you put two guys in the ring, two technicians, all right, like the way they, these guys are, that can fight. They can they can brawl, and they can exchange, and they can bring excitement, and then there's times where they could be very technical, and it was exciting, all right? It looked like, you know, this was an event from what I've seen on TV. This looked like it was a really nice event in, in Omaha. Um, you know, the crowd was very into the fight. Okay, it, it, it looked like it was a great fight to be at. I wish I could have been this, at this fight live. Um, it was a classic. This is a classic fight. This is this is one for the history books to me. All right, uh, perfect fight. You know, two technicians. This is why you gotta make good fights. This is the fights. This is why you gotta make. You know, you gotta put guys in the ring with each other that. Are going to be competitive just because two guys are in the ring brawling is just punching each other in the face going back like exchanging like uh, Brandon Rios and uh, Mike Alvarado it doesn't always have to be where these guys are just standing right in each other front the face and slugging it out and there's no defense involved this fight was just as exciting if not more excited Okay, and they two, these are two technical boxers that can bring the action at the same time. And these are why, this is why I like fighters like this. I love Gamboa. I really hope, you know, this whole SMS thing is not over. I hope Gamboa, I hope 50 can still get Gamboa fights. Um, I hope Gamboa still gets to fight Mikey Garcia down the line. I wouldn't even mind. I, and you know what? It, 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 regardless of what you think of the outcome, I even would love to see a Gambo and Pacquiao fight. That's a fight that I've always wanted to see too. You know, I would love to see that fight. Regardless if you think Pacquiao will beat him or knock him out. Still would love to see a fight because it would be a great fight. It would be very entertaining. All right. Um, Terrence Crawford, you know, whether he stays at 135 or go 140, if he goes to 140, man, He's going to bring a lot of promise up, a lot of guys up there, all of them. Danny Garcia, Chris Algieri, Lamar Peterson, Adrian Broder. He's going to bring hell to all of those guys. All right. All right. 147 is a little different, though. 147 is a little bit. 147 is like 
the league of extraordinary gentlemen. Like that's another league. That's like, you know, that's like that's a whole nother class. All right. So it'll be a lot more competitive at one forty seven. But at one forty, Terrence Crawford, he already we already see what happened to Prescott. He would bring a lot of problems to those guys at one forty. Okay. Um, and Gamboa, too. I still would like to see him. You know, a lot of people are saying he should go down to 126, 130. Um, you know, at least 130, you know, fight at 130. But I still want to see Mikey Garcia fight, man. I want to see that fight, man. I ain't forget about that. I tweeted both of those guys. I was like, listen, I ain't forget. The fight was over. I was like, I ain't forget, Mikey. I tweeted him. I was like, I ain't forget. I still want to see you in the ring with Gamboa. Don't think I forgot about that. I still want to see that fight. Classic fight. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say, man. Oh, man. I don't know what you guys was doing when you was watching the fight, but, man, I was screaming, jumping around all over the place. And plus, I like both fighters, so I'm screaming like, yeah. Yo, you know, I was happy when Terrence Crawford knocked him down, but then when he looked like he was about to knock him out, I was like, oh, oh damn, I don't want Gamboa to get I was with my family. They're like, well, who, who do you want to win? And I was like, I like Gamboa, too. I don't want to get, I don't want him to get knocked out. But, hey, it's, it looked like, you know, I was just excited. It was a lot of excitement, man. Um, I haven't been that excited for a while. But, uh, anyway, I love the fight. I'm trying to think there's anything else I want to bring up. I can't remember now. But, you know, that's the way I thought the fight was going. Uh, you know, Terrence Crawford, he made the adjustments. He's legit. There's no, there's no debating at this point. This kid is legit. He could switch up his stance, fight very comfortably, orthodox, um, you know, southpaw, you know, whatever. And, and, and he made the adjustments, and he made it work for him. And he traded. Even got hurt. He even got hurt. You know, he. I thought he was getting outclassed. I was scared. I was like, oh man, don't, don't come in here and just let Gamboa destroy you. But, you know, I turned it around. Gamboa, man, I hope both of these guys still get fights, man. So, anyway, that's it. I'm not going to talk anymore because I can't remember what else I wanted to say about the fight. But I love the fight. Classic. My favorite fight since Pacquiao, Marquez 4. And that's it. That's a wrap. All right. So, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you guys think. Peace.